Yeah. Um, hi, I'm Tobin. First, I've just got my fingerprint up there. If um, anyone's in the Colonel River Trust, could they please take a photo of it and um, sign my key? Thanks. Um, the slides are up if you want to see them. Um, so, who am I and why am I here? Um, to quote someone I like, I'm just some guy from some place who likes hacking on the Colonel. Um, up to three days ago, I wasn't paid to do this, but my pins are my own. I'm a Colonel newbie, so if I say something that's wrong, feel free to yell it out. Don't take pity on me, just yell out. I've got less than a year um, doing Colonel. And during that year, I hit a wall. So for about two months, I was just dead stuck. I um, didn't even like using the computer. I was just like, this sucks. And I did stuff that wasn't Colonel. So hopefully, this talk is going to help anyone else not hit that wall. So it's a beginner's talk, intro to kernel hacking, and um, hopefully there's some people here who've got a patch or two mainlined and they're thinking, what do I do next? Um, yep, so it's to help those people and if anyone wants to help me, that's great too. Okay, so some things. Why you might not want to do kernel development. Um, it's hard. Um, some kernel developers are prickly. Um, it's not that cool. Um, the kids don't like it, we still use email. And it can be kind of lonely if you get stuck doing something that no one cares about. Just um, patch after patch after patch gets either merged or no comments. So just some things for you to think about yourself if you do want to do this is why you might want to do it because you have to motivate yourself really. What motivates me is not going to be what motivates other people. So um, what makes you get up every morning and stand or sit in front of your keyboard? And how much time have you got to devote to this? So it could be easily the best part of a year before you're doing anything useful or anything. Now, some reasons why you might want to do kernel development. It's cool, we still use email. <laughs> um, if you're the type of person who likes programming, programming in systems programming, systems programming in C, open source systems programming in C, you get the idea. Um, most kernel developers are super polite super well-mannered and um, very generous with their time. Every time I get an email from someone who like, knows a lot about a lot of things, I'm always humbled that they took the time to write it to me. It's really cool. And if you ask the right questions and put in a bit of effort, people are usually pretty keen to help. So basically, if this work is meaningful to you and um, you think you've got the resources to do it, then go for it. Now, I've got a bit of a preamble in this um, talk, and um, as well as being a kernel newbie, I'm a talking newbie, so um, yeah, if you thought my um, patches were annoying, wait till you see my slides. <laughs> um, people, get some social skills. So if you hang out on kernel newbies enough, there's just people come and write emails where if someone said that to you in person, you just wouldn't want to talk to them anymore. So um, we're all nerds here, so read some books. There's plenty of books on how not to be a dick. Um, and then maybe have, um, if you have um, beginner's mind. Oh, first, yeah, I want to say, often when I'm thinking of these ideas and observations, I feel like I'm preaching a bit. Obviously, I'm, I'm, I didn't come here to preach to you guys. You know, most of you know a lot more than me. So um, please don't take it like that. It's just suggestions. What works for me is not necessarily what works for anyone else. Um, I won't dwell on this too much, but basically you need to know C. So that's like, it's not really an option. Um, I like reading books and doing exercises, so there's some books. Um, the slides are up if you want to see them. Now, good news, there's loads of things to do in the kernel. And people are pretty appreciative if you do stuff that's useful. But useful is a hard word to define. A few guidelines that um, I found to, like, I try and think of before when I send a patch and realise I did something wrong is Tobin don't break things. Um, and B, um, it's nice to be super respectful of people's time. You know, there's a lot of people with, that are busy and um, it takes time to read patches, it takes time to tell, email me and tell me my spelling's wrong. So it's kind of nice to put in the effort and just be respectful of people's time. And then work on what interests you. As um, someone famous said, we're in it for fun, just for fun, right? And one thing that I got bogged in is um, if you look at the whole kernel, there's heaps of it so it's, that it says, you know, it's hard. There's a lot of lines of code. So if you focus on things you can do, then it saves you getting massively depressed. 
Um, this is just the method that I think is a good method. It may work for nobody else in the world, but for me it's a good way. Do a patch. There's plenty of information on the net of how to do your first patch. Do a patch set, That's because that's not the same as, a set, as doing one patch. And then do a bunch of check patch fixes. Um, I read a post, um, post from Linus saying that maintainers should take check patch, pick, um, check patch fixes in the core kernel. I did that, and I now think that's a terrible idea. Um, <laughs> we've got staging for a reason, so um, newbies, please stay in staging for ages. Um, it's just heaps better for everyone. So moving on, that's the preamble of five minutes. That's good. I've got about five more minutes. Um, this talk hinges on a few points, a few observations I made. One, you can't do and shouldn't do cleanups outside of staging. You can't really change code when you don't understand it, except for check patch some fixes in staging. But yeah, and also it's hard to um, it's hard to you can't change code if you don't understand it. And for me anyway, it's hard to understand code if you don't change it. So you can just make your own branch and change heaps of stuff, but that's kind of boring. It's more fun when you you know give it out to someone else. So. Even when you do find something that you think needs fixing, you probably won't get it merged. And or it'll take ages and ages, like version 17. I find, I learned, what I learned was that this is because it's based on trust. So I got kind of annoyed with Greg KH because he wouldn't respond. I just put like the 30 patch set, he just goes, yeah, merged. I'm like, I'm kind of not learning anything when you just merge stuff like that. And so I asked him, he's like, I figured you'd fix it if it was wrong. And that's where I got where I found out that it's about trust. You know, if you'll be there and you'll fix it, then you can get stuff through. In staging, anyway. Um, some good things. Most kernel guys have, or any of the ones I've talked to, have got loads of stuff that they need doing, and they don't have that much time to do it. So, if you can convince someone to give you some of that work, then you're laughing. Hang on a minute. Giving newbies work takes time too, right? Takes time to explain it. Reviewing patches takes time, especially the same patch seven times in a row. Um, and they've got a nasty habit of asking you what to do when they can't do what you already told them to do. People, get some people skills, read some books. It's, if you can convince a kernel hacker to um, give you some of their, spend some of their time on you, give you something to work on, they benefit too. It's nice when things get done that you don't, and you don't have to do them yourself, things that you wanted done. It's nice when people respect you. As much as we try to keep ego out of it, everyone's got one, and if people ask you for help, it's a sign of respect. And you learn things by teaching people, and um, most of us, or most kernel hackers anyway, like learning stuff. So you need to convince them and yourself that you're worth the effort. If you've got the base skill set, hence that long slide I had that I didn't talk about, if you're putting in the effort, and if you pay attention. No one likes to say the same things more than once. And you're pleasant to interact with. You read the bit about people skills, right? Okay, so now I kind of I put this slide because I didn't want um, all the um, experienced guys to walk out of here and then 30 noobs just run up to them and go, yeah, tell me heaps of stuff, give me some work. So um, you don't have to talk to them directly, look on the mailing list, listen to them or just listen to them talk about what they're doing and often they'll say, oh, there's this thing that needs doing but you know, I don't have time to do it. And then just go away and look it up. Say, so think, can I do that? Um, sometimes you can't. Um, sometimes you can. If you just research it, have a bit of a go, put in a rubbish patch that's like almost there, and that will show a lot of these points, you know. And usually, or often, they'll go, oh yeah, maybe just change this, change this, learn a heaps of stuff, you noob, and then come back and do it again. And that's sweet. So yeah, come to conferences. You're at conferences now. That's great. Lurk on the lists. Um, yeah, and then one thing I didn't realise at first is that you can offer to help and if I spend five minutes of like real time, it might have taken me all day, but what should have taken someone who knows what they're doing five minutes and then it takes an hour for someone to review it, that's not a good use of the community's time in, in my opinion. So you've got to be respectful of people's time and um, yeah, try not to make mistakes and try to do things that like you wouldn't walk into someone's house and put your feet on the table. So I kind of think it's the same sort of thing, thinking about people's time. Um, I won't go through all of that. That's like my um, brain fart about summing up. Um, does anyone have any questions or does anyone want to tell me I'm wrong? Any suggestions? Yeah, 
hope people uh, listen to this talk and, and take notice of what you're saying. That's <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Willie? Phrasing my question in the form of a statement, I think this applies broadly to all of open source. As a non-kernel developer, I'm taking all of this advice and taking it to my own projects. So thank you. This is great. Cheers. <laughs> One additional uh, point is be prepared to fail. Uh, you put in a patch, it gets accepted by Linus, and then it crashes the kernel. <laughs> it's happened too often. Yeah. As rock climbers say, get slack to fail. Uh, this, this talk is great. Um, please reformat it as a patch to the documentation directory. And <laughs> 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 Uh, what, what, one piece of advice I want to give to other kernel hackers is um, we, we all talk about putting something on our to-do list. I've actually started create, keeping a written to-do list, and it's, it's actually working out really well for me. It's, it hasn't, I, haven't, I haven't been keeping it for all that long, but it's, it's, um, it's helped me not forget to do a lot, a lot of stuff. And it's really helpful for passing work on to um, other people. If you've actually got a line in a text file, and you can expand it to a paragraph that you hand off to someone. That's... Um, that, 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 that's a really good way of helping. Um, I also want to plug um, the Outreachy program, um, who will provide. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, who, who, who will, Out, Outreachy will provide you with interns who are willing to um, put in an awful lot of effort, and they're, they're actually being paid. And it's a great opportunity to get some stuff off your to-do list. Hi, uh, it's a great talk. Uh, maybe talking about testing, because testing, uh, maintainers really love to have a patch set with are tested. So maybe patching is great, but testing patch sets or mailits to say, OK, this patch set has been tested. On some platforms, it's always great to have it uh, uh, mainlined. Sorry, is that, is that a question? Yeah, I would say about testing. Because, yeah, uh, yeah. What, my personal experience? No, about general experience, uh, testing uh, patch patch from others. Yeah. It's always, always a good point. Yeah, yeah. To to gain the the respect of a maintainer, to have more work, or maintainers love to have uh, tested by the tags on patch sets. Yeah, it's easier said than done, but yeah, yeah it's a but, good uh, idea. Yeah. It's a, a good way to actually do something and test some different platforms and uh, so on. Definitely, definitely. Thank you.